Hi everyone. Uh, with our current situation at the moment where there's no band rehearsals being held, a few people had asked on Facebook, oh, does anyone know how to make those little movie things with mini pictures of everyone playing instruments together? And I've done quite a few of them over the last well, 10 or 12 years so and saw a lot of interest in other people learning how to do it. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. Um, initially, this is sort of aimed at band directors. The possibility would be to, um, with the aid of a backing track or a click track, have students record their own parts with a video camera, with a picture and sound, send them through, then the band directors can compile the parts and put their own little people into boxes to make their own virtual band as such, but potentially too, it'd be great for students to learn how to do it as well. This'll, this video will be suitable for everyone, hopefully, to learn how to do it. The concept of this is a little bit weird for me. I've got to create a video showing you how to use Premiere. And then once that's done, I've then got to put that into Premiere to make the movie that you're now seeing. It's a little bit like if you've seen the movie Inception, where they've got a dream inside a dream inside a dream. So keep that in mind. Um, I'm actually talking about things that I haven't done yet, which I'll be doing when I edit this movie. First up, I'll explain how to get Adobe Premiere. Um, I've chosen to use that because it's readily accessible for a Department of Education teachers. They get it for a very good price and it's free for students as well. There are other options, but this one is a, one of the industry standards and it's got so many features and for what we're doing today, it will be actually very easy to use. Um, if you go to Google and you search for Adobe WAH, which is work at home, the first website is that New South Wales um, DET and if you click on that it'll you need to sign in to be able to buy this and it does say you've also got um, if you want here you can buy Windows you get a new computer I highly recommend that you install the, the full Windows 10 I think it's 30 bucks for a license and that gets rid of all the bloatware and extra stuff that you don't really need on your computers but if we go to Adobe there's a few options in here first of all Creative Cloud is there all of their software you can individually get premiere elements which is a, a little bit cheaper again as a slightly watered down version there's a lot of stuff you can do and pretty much this you should be able to do as well in that there's a few modes where you've got your basic mode your expert mode which is more like this um, let's have a quick look at creative cloud and see what you get so it's 14 dollars for a one-year license um, if you're a student though, it's free. And if you have a, your own kids that go to department schools, then they can put it on the computer they're gonna be using at home, which may be yours. If you look what we've got, the main apps are here. Photoshop, I use that all the time just for editing some pictures. The Premiere, of course, are the one that we'll be using today. Other things included, which is great, is Acrobat Pro, which is the program that allows you to create PDFs. If you're doing, there are other free ones, but if you're doing music and you want to make the parts in the PDFs, Acrobat's the standard to use. Um, Adobe Audition is a wave editor program. So if you wanted to get a sample of some music and cut little bits out, you can go in and do all that. There's been wave editors around for 15, 20 years, but this one's pretty good. You can fade out and add lots of other effects and things as well. Media Encoder would be included anyway if you're using Premiere, it uses that to convert the movie into the different various formats, and there's heaps of them. And a few other things here which you may find useful, but not necessarily. If you are not a Department of Education teacher and you chose to buy this yourself, it's pretty pricey. All the apps is $77 a month, and that's well, about a thousand a year probably or close to that. Uh, I've heard somewhere that maybe they've reduced it recently to $50 a month, but that's still $600 a year, which is very expensive. You can get just get Premiere on its own for $30 a month. That's what, $360 a year. And there is a, a lighter version, Premiere Rush, which I haven't looked at. It's more affordable, but it's still fairly expensive when you put that down to a yearly access fee. But this is mainly aimed at people who are able to get the teacher or the student rate. Now I am looking at two computer screens here. This one's got all my work on it and this one's got my notes so I don't forget anything hopefully. So I'll keep looking from side to side. So with my little multi-track movie things, the first one I did was a, a barbershop quartet, which is 
didn't come out particularly well. Barbershop's actually really hard to, to sing well. But after doing that, one of my friends, Linda from the Hills Band, hi Linda, you're probably not watching this though, um, requested the Lonely Ash Grove. So I decided, oh, okay, that, I, I like that. So I did an arrangement and then posted that one the next day, which sounds like this. And having done that, I decided to bite the bullet and, and do a big one straight away. So I went with a, almost a whole big band, which had 15 tracks, so five saxophones, four trumpets, four trombones, and I uh, had upright bass in this one, the piano, and I didn't do any drums. I just did a little backing, swing track instead for that one, because I'm, I'm not a very good drummer. And that came out like this. <laughs> You may notice the quality of these isn't fantastic. I was just using actually this one, just a, a very cheap, well back then it probably wasn't, web camera, only standard definition video, but it did the job. And if once you start putting more than four movies on your screen, so don't put two here, two here, the resolution is gonna be half anyway. And if you've got 16, they're gonna be a quarter of the size. So. Um, that probably won't be such an effort. And I'm sort of aiming this video at, you don't need top of the range equipment. My computer's about 12 years old. So some spots actually won't work very well at all as I'm going, but the end result will be fine. Um, then I decided, I found at school, a big roll of this green was on the wall and was gonna be taken down. So I decided to do some green screen effect. After that, I upgraded to using my video camera, which I'm actually using now rather than a web camera. And I did, and I heard it years ago, Gordon Goodwin's The Royal Tomatoes. It's a saxophone quintet arrangement. And I recorded that one. I used green screen for that because I wanted to get the effect of having five of me. So there's one in the middle at the back and then another one at the front a little bit and another one so it looked like I was playing with myself. And that effect came out fairly well. That was. Uh, would have been over eight years ago. It was my very first YouTube video. Just after that was my 40th birthday. I decided to have a bit of fun in my, instead of having a, a slideshow, I had a few music things and, and put this When You're Smiling together, which is a little bit cheesy, but who cares? After that, at Christmas time, I did an arrangement of Silent Night. And rather than going with the sort of boxes all around the place, I decided to do vertical instead. So it's quite easy on your movie, just crop the two sides and just leave the face. And I did that because I wanted to, you to see my cool Christmas hat. Um, and that way, it's more like you're standing next to each other too when you're doing a virtual group.
right, so there's two main ways you can create these movies. The first way is to just use a video camera like I'm using right here. You record your video and the sound in the same file and you just drag them in. And I'll be showing you how that works today. I'm gonna to have four different parts. And once I videoed it, I just drag those four parts in, line them up and pretty much it's done. The other option, which is better if you want high quality sound, is to use a good quality video camera so you get a nice picture and that this still I'll be using that. But then use a better microphone. I've got to the Rode, I think it's NT USB mic there and I've got a um, Behringer B2 I think it is which I often use for my just my studio things um, record the audio into an audio program and I'll pull this up quickly so you can see this is some Cubase elements I've never gone the full version of Cubase because it's a lot more expensive and I've got all the features I need here just to be able to do multi-track recording and editing and it does the job fine so I've just got my full trombone parts here so I've done the audio here. Once that's done, I can, and it's easy to fix mistakes up as well if you make any, then you can mix that down just to two stereo tracks. You export that, and then you can bring that in to Adobe Premiere later and just line it up with your videos and remove the sound from the videos because you're gonna be using your audio program sound instead. I'll get rid of that so it doesn't chew up all my resources. Um, when you're getting people to record their tracks, there's two choices. You can use just a, a click track, which is just a click, 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 uh, which is great for older students. The only issue will be if you've got tempo changes, you, it's a little bit harder to follow. And I often, if I'm going quite slow, instead of having a crotch, a click, I'll then in the slowing down bits, break it down to quavers. So it might go click, 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 then click, 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 even semi-quavers too. So you can always hear the divisions of the beat. Otherwise, you're probably going to get out of time. And then when the, a tempo comes back later, you won't be ready for that. For younger kids, a backing track is probably better so they can actually hear what they're playing along with, not just the clicks, but the actual the music as well. Particularly if they had eight bars rest, they'll know where to come in. So if you're setting up something for them to record at home, even download the demo from the internet and have them play along with that could work uh, as long as when they're recording or if you're doing it when you're recording too that you use headphones you don't want loud speakers playing because then that sound will go back through the microphone and you'll get the click track or the backing track as well as your playing and all you want in your recording is just your playing and video not the other sounds as well so for, for this if, if they can't do that, it will work out fine. It's all about having a bit of fun and for them knowing that they're gonna be contributing to a virtual band later on. Um, one last thing before we get into Premiere is about the audio and the video. Now, when you have just a video camera with sound included in that file, it's pretty easy to line up the video. It's very hard to line up the sound perfectly. The video generally is recorded most movies at 30 frames per second, which is a, a 30th of a second per thing. Whereas music, uh, CD quality is 44.1 kilohertz or, or 44,100 hertz or samples every second. Uh, music programs will often round that up to 48 kilohertz and often double that 96. So we've got 96,000 samples every second. You can adjust your sound one sample either side and you can get them perfectly lined up but if you divide that by 30 then we're looking at what was it three it's a bit too late to be thinking about that but three thousand times the resolution of your sound in the video so if your video goes one click that way we're looking at three thousand clicks of the audio that could be actually a long way out so i do prefer if possible the editing the audio separately. You can even have students submit a video camera recording. You can take the audio out of that, put it into your DAW, which is your digital audio workstation, and line up the audio perfectly and then export all that. And the great thing about that too is it's a lot easier to pan the sound. So if you've got four flutes, you don't want all the flutes in the same spot in the recording, or you can get some phasing effects. So if you've got one flute here, one flute there, one flute there, one flute there, you'll get a stereo effect without the phasing 
as well. Okay, uh, let's get into Premiere. I've already opened it up just to make it a little bit faster. Computer specs, if you looked up the internet now for what to need, it'd be ridiculously high specs. For $1,500 video card, probably the same price for the CPU, 32 gig of memory. It'll work with a lot, lot less, but some things like real-time rendering won't be as good. And there'll be some spots where my computer just won't even render in real time at all. But once you make your final product, it will work fine. Just checking I haven't missed anything yet. Okay, I'm gonna do a new project. It'll ask you a, a name. I'm gonna call this Premiere Tutorial. I'll call it PIP, which is picture in picture, which is sort of what we're doing. Um, we like it to go. Uh, about 10 years ago, Premiere recommended your computer had three hard disks, one to run Windows, one to run the Premiere program, and another one for all your project files, where the audio files get saved and stuff like that. Because if they all try to access the same hard disk at the same time, it'd go too slow. If you've got a fairly modern hard disk, I've got a solid state drive in this one, uh, but I don't have any issues at all, especially with the, the size of the projects I'm doing. So you don't really need to change anything at this point. Uh, if you're capturing through here, you can choose whether it's high definition or just standard definition. I was going to leave this as is and OK. If you did set up for one size and you brought in a video of a different size, so if your project is high definition and you bring in the standard definition movie, then it will shrink it automatically to be half the size or a quarter the size of your window, but you can resize them later anyway. And that's actually a good way of reducing the size. If you know you're going to be shrinking them anyway, record it at a lower quality. So this is our Premiere window. We've got four main areas of different versions. They come up in different places. The first area here is called your assets, and this is where your files will go. So files you can use include video files, which have picture and sound built into them, just plain sound files, and there's lots of different formats supported, and just picture files. So if you want to have a, just a static background or something, you can drop a picture in, and then you can have music playing and you could have maybe it with a green screen effect. Use your green screen. There's some cheap cardboard and you click your fingers and you can see through to what's in the background. Click your fingers again and it goes back to normal. So pictures are quite useful for backgrounds. Underneath there are some effects. Uh, I probably won't be using any of them in this tutorial. However, the green screen definitely here. The fade in, fade out are, are elsewhere, but things like page curls, if you're going from one page to another, and I do that with my score demos, and one might look like this. like this and when it gets to the bottom it'll flip over to the next page and up the top here you will see all the effects controls once I've got clips this will turn on down the bottom is where my clips are going to go that I'm working with and over here is my preview of what my movie is going to look like so I'm going to start off by putting in my clips you can press the buttons and open them and all that I'm just going to drag them in so I've got my little folder here I've got four trombone parts I've pre-recorded earlier simply drag them in there we go one two three four I won't say what this is yet some people once you hear it playing you'll know so each one of these is just a single part I've recorded looks a bit like this It was a bit noisy because I recorded through the video camera. I had numbers at the beginning. Like that. Just so, because the parts do all look pretty much the same. There's four parts with me playing the same instrument. Just so you know which one's which and you know they actually are different parts. Sometimes you'll see the, 
thing just a little bit different. So I've now got my four parts in here. In this area, we have things called sequences. A sequence is one part of your movie. So it might be that a sequence is just one clip. It might be one clip that turns into a, another clip and then another one. It's just three different movie parts all in a row. You could have two clips and you could put an effect in the middle, which might be a fade or a transition or a, a J cuts where the sound sort of fades out from one clip and fades into the other. Page turns, all these sort of things. You could have one clip spin around going to the other one, but all these clips are in one sequence. What you can do with sequences, and this is a little bit like Inception as well, I could have my four trombone parts, and I'll be doing this today, putting them into four boxes in my movie. If they are one sequence, I can then animate that whole sequence. So if I said I want my movie clips to spin, if I did the four clips separately, each clip will spin where it is, so you've got spinning like this. Whereas if I spin the whole sequence, all four movies can then spin off to the side on their own. Not that you need that for this sort of thing, but it's cool to be able to throw in a few special effects now and then. So to, the easy way to create a sequence is just to drag a clip in. I'm gonna get trombone one and just drag it in. And all this stuff turns on and it's got V1 for video one and then A1 for audio one. And at this point, they should be locked. If I move my movie around, the audio and the video stay lined up. You can turn that off. Usually you don't want the audio to go out of sync with the video, but you might want to do that to actually remove the audio completely. And you can see here, it comes up with a preview of me. That's not a mining lamp on my head. It's actually just a little lamp that I had in the background when I recorded those and I've moved them now. And I'm gonna add another clip, going to. I'm going to drag that in just on top and then down here for some reason it decided to put the audio into audio three but I can just drag that up Volume three also add that there and there's been stuff on there as well now it's only it says one two three doesn't matter just drag another one in and it will create the next clip the next um, tr um, sort of track or channel for you I don't know why it's doing this down here but and doesn't normally do that. Just move it up. So I've now got my four movies with four audio, but you can only see one. And that will be number four. Now I know that if I move along to a little preview thing, there we go, number four. Just in your list here, whatever's on top is on top. All of these movies, even if they're all side by side, are actually layered. So we have in, if you didn't use Photoshop before, you've got a background and then Next layer, another layer, another layer, and whichever layer is higher in your list is further to the front. Your movies work the same way. So this one says trombone four is going to be the front video because it's on top in the list and trombone one's down the bottom. For us, it won't matter once they're made into smaller areas and I'm gonna make them small and you'll see how it works. So let's go to trombone one. And in this area here is where we control things like size, position, rotation, we've got opacities, if you can see the movie or not, if you want your movie to fade in, you can have opacity zero, meaning it's completely see-through. And then you can either just turn it on to 100 like that, and you can see it, or you can fade it in from zero up to 100 over a second or two, and it will fade in. So you could have one move, two movies like this. You can see movie one at the front, that will fade out gradually, and then the second movie at the back fades in and they'll actually sort of end up like that. Where one fades out and the other fades in at the same spot. You could have it move in from the side over the top and fade in. It's completely unlimited how you use your effects. So I'm going to start off by changing the scale. In most of the Adobe programs, you've got two ways of changing numbers. You can click on the number and type it in, 50, and instantly it will go half the size. Of course, you can't see trombone one because it's at the back. So I'll actually do trombone four first, just so you see what's happening. So scale, click, 50, enter, and then see, trombone four has shrunk to 50% of the size. We're talking about length and width here, not area. Technically it's 25% in area, but it will shrink at 50% in both 
those directions. You can shrink in one direction or one axis and not the other, but that's generally not going to be particularly useful in video editing. Now we need to change the position of our movie. Up here it says 720 by 540. Now that is half of 1440 and that's half of 1080, which is actually the resolution of high definition video. So the middle of the screen's right there, that's where my movie is centered. I'm gonna to need to move that half the distance over there, so it should end up going to 360. And this is trombone four, so I want that to go down the bottom corner. So let's just, uh, the other way you can move numbers is by sl moving the slider. You see it'll move across. If I do that, and it should go to 1080. this one going down is going to go to I'm going to get it close and then just adjust the numbers at the end it's going to be 810 which is half of 810 okay next little trombone three same thing I'll start with the scale first 50 that's there you can actually drag them in this window as well. A bit stubborn sometimes about it working. You, but some reason it's not now, but you can get the movie and drag it. If you want to set up an animation and have something move from there to there, you can just get it from there, set a keyframe, which I'll explain a little bit later if, if I think of it. Then you can drag it down, set another keyframe, and it will move between those points. But seeing as it doesn't want to move for me, probably because it's very slow, I'll just use my little sliders. And this is going to be 360, looks like. And it's going to be the same as it was before, which was 810. Trombone 2 is going to go up in the top right corner. Change the scale, 50. And that's also going to go across Ten eighty. That line you can see in the video here is not in the video. It's actually the corner of my room. And this one's going to go down because the smaller number is higher up. It's going to be 270. And then last one, trombone one, will also be 270. Oh, got to change the scale. And then to the left, probably, is it 360 probably? Yep, 360. So that's all the positioning is done, which is actually quite easy. Once you've done one of them, the others are just as easy. If you were going to go to nine little videos, so a three by three grid, then you would need to reduce the size to, or the scale to 33 or maybe 34 for one of them, and then position them accordingly. And if you're going to do 16, which some of my movies have done, it'll they'll be scale of 25% and just position them. So you've got one, two, three, four. Now, the problem is now is the playback is not going to be very, very good. Now, I probably can't play back in real time as my computer's a bit slow. To give you an idea though, I'm going to use this slider. This changes how tall my tracks will display. For the video, You can do the same thing and it shows you a little preview at that point in the movie. I don't care so much about that at the moment. But the audio, I like this, I do want to be able to see my little, my waveforms. So if I do very small, it'll then turn off after a while. But I want it big enough that I can see very clearly where the waves are. And that'll, that's the easiest way to line up your clips so the sound will happen at the same time on all four tracks. So you can see here, this is all Channel one, that's where the main sound starts. There's a little bit of background noise here. Channel two starts there. They're not lined up. So I drag down a little bit. Channel three looks pretty close to channel one. And then channel four is too early as well. So I'm gonna adjust them to the latest one, which looks like it's channel three. Rather than try and push them forward, I'm gonna move them back. Now moving things 
horizontally or in time is very, very easy. Let me go to my track two. Doesn't matter whether you grab the audio or the video because they're, they're linked. So I'm gonna get audio two and drag that across a little bit and let go. Oh, I've gone a bit too far. Now you might find it's really hard to adjust. The most we can adjust is one thirtieth of a second or one frame. And at the moment, it's probably going every two or three frames. So I can use this slider at the bottom and that will expand sort of the resolution I can work with horizontally. There we go. Now I want to move this back a little bit and hope I can line it up exactly. And as I move it, you can see it's showing numbers minus zero, 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 four. That's pretty close. And it will probably for this project is probably okay. This slide up. Now I'm going to move track one across. Not quite enough. That looks pretty good right there. And then down the bottom to the fourth trombone. That's a long way in front at the moment. I will now move that across a bit more. And this is a little slow to respond as well on my computer. I probably should update. I have to ask the um, significant other half about that. That looks pretty good there. If it's not perfect, I can go back and adjust it, zooming in as much as possible. But once you're down to adjusting by a single video frame, you can't go smaller than that. Now I've done that, I'll go back to here again. So I'll just be able to see the audio. Okay, that looks maybe a tiny bit in front, that'll be fine. In the movie here, I'm gonna rewind to the beginning and I have a problem that I can only see one video. So trombone three starts right at the beginning there. And then trombone one comes in a little bit later. If I move my timeline up to hip, Trombone one comes in and then a little bit further up and trombone two is going to come in. And then there it is. And, oh, and four as well, because four is down the bottom there. So trombone two is about to show up, I think. There, they're all there now. So I'm going to remove the beginning of these that I don't need. There's a couple of different ways you can do this. There is a razor tool that will actually physically cut a line then you can delete that section. The problem is though, once it's deleted, uh, maybe you come back tomorrow and want to do some more, it's gone. A better way is to just drag the front and you can see that red little box with a line or the arrow there. That will let you move the start point without actually deleting video. Now, instead of pushing the whole movie along, it just moves the starting point up to there. So, and all the stuff that was here just isn't there anymore. It just won't play, but it's still there. It's just, it's hiding. Same with this one. I can move that up to there and they'll snap quite nicely onto another lining up with the other ones. And then just the lucky last one is oops, too far. Trombone four, move the start up to just a little tiny bit there. They all start at the same time. If I rewind this though, I've got a two second gap at the beginning. There's zero seconds, one second, two seconds. That's pretty pointless. So I'm going to highlight all four tracks just by drawing over part of them a little bit and just drag right back to the beginning. And then in my movie, they should all be coming on at the same time. Just a bit slow to render here. There we go. If I play it now, it might not play very nicely in real time, but we'll give it a go. It's struggling, but hopefully you'll see the instruments all start coming up at the same time. And I'll give you a proper preview in a minute as I've rendered this already. Definitely struggling, but all the instruments coming up together. So that will line up nicely. Now let's go to the end of the movie and do the same thing. And grab the slider, drag it along there. Uh, they've all finished playing already at this point, so it's just a matter of, once again, getting that. Snap it in line with the shortest one. And that one snapped to there. And that one snapped to there. 
and then that, they'll all finish at the same time. If you wanted to, you could add little fade outs at the end of that outside the scope of this movie but it's very easy to do using some of the what, what I'll actually do is go okay, here so the opacity just to give you an idea of what you can do I might click at this point I don't think yeah I can't do multiple tracks on this but you can copy and paste them between but if I was to set for opacity if I set a keyframe right there that's a point in time where something is going to happen and if I move to the end and add another keyframe there but make it zero then you can see here the opacity gradually goes down from 100 to zero over that time you can, oh you can just see the trombone for the picture faded out just towards the end that's actually very short so I can you know get that and move it along there a bit more and as we play through it'll get to this point and that will start fading out towards the end you couldn't see it it was not rendering well enough um, final step is just to render or make your final movie to do that you can go file export and media having a good old think about that so it comes up asking what format you would like I'm pretty sure this one's one of the best ones to use if you're doing YouTube so I've just remembered that from previously all these different formats here you can use so depending on what you're making it for um, choose the appropriate one you can, you can choose all of these different options all the way down to ones specific for YouTube towards the end high definition different formats so down here YouTube so if you want a high definition video set up perfectly for YouTube this is the one here that you'd use like that it says here it's going to be 1440 by 1080 that's the resolution 25 frames per second is fine if you started with 30 it's okay to go to 25 as it is the yellow line here shows me what's going to be done I choose where it's going to go so I click on that opens up with my folder in the tutorial I'll call it CBR bones and I go save to set the new name if I've got lots of different movies I can say Q and then when I'm going out or going to bed or whatever I can just press go and it will render all of those movies which could take hours depending on what it is some of my bigger ones have taken eight hours to render if you want to do just one then you go export this one probably takes about seven or eight minutes maybe there's no effects take a long time green screen effects take a long time page curl stuff like that so it's dropping down a little bit it says like 11 minutes so it's going to take just to make this movie uh, i've done that earlier so i'll give you a quick look now at what that movie looks like. replace the included audio with the movie files I'll delete them and I'll add the track with the audio which I created in Cubase which is much better quality because it was done with a nice microphone oh uh, well you'll hear a lot more mistakes in my playing though it was a bit do a quick take or two sort of thing but I'll give you a good idea though you'll hear that much better quality in the sound there's no background noise that you would have heard with the, the video camera mic now I will need to unlink the audio with the video. So if I try and delete my audio track here, press delete, it'll delete the video track associated with that. So I'll undo that. This button here is the link selection. I'll turn that off. So now they are not linked. I can delete 
and I won't delete all of them yet because I'll need a reference point for my other audio when I add it. So I'll delete audio two and three and four and I'll import my WAV file and if you don't know what the song is now, now you do. And I'll drag that down. And it's actually added that as a separate audio track again, even though these are empty, they're still there. I guess in case you want to add stuff later to associate with those tracks. So I'll move the mood along to the right. starts it looks like it starts at just before tiny bit too much right there that looks like it's gonna be pretty close maybe not quite this way if you, if you want to be more precise that's where you extend it The start of my wave is about there. And then it's about, oh, same here. So we've got to go back about two clicks that way. One, two. That's lined up with there and lined up there. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'll just make sure nothing weird happening at the end. That looks pretty good. I'll leave this in here just so you can see that the, it'll fade out on my rendered movie. And I'll save that as another copy. It's always good to have an extra copy in case you've got to go back and do something. And I've deleted my tracks. So I'll call it V2. And as before, file, export, media. And I'll just have to rename it. And then you'll see the final results.